Hong Kong has been playing a respectable role in the global research arena. Research teams based in Hong Kong have been making continuous and remarkable social impact to the city, the region and the world. From science to arts, and from technology to social sciences and humanities. Over the years, Hong Kong has developed a critical mass of stellar researchers. We have come a long way in building research excellence in the higher education sector, with more and more of our researchers receiving prestigious innovation awards, registering international patents and producing widely recognized and quality publications. With the increased resources committed by the government and cross-boundary research funding opportunities provided by the mainland, we should capitalize on these new resources and advance knowledge in partnership with other sectors beyond academia. I'm confident that researchers will make even more significant contribution to long-term and sustainable development of Hong Kong. There is a need to forestall water scarcity and water pollution in cities worldwide. Professor Chen has been leading his team to improve wastewater treatment for decades. Hong Kong use seawater oil refreshing, bring a lot of sulfate. We make it sulfate as a kind of uh, electron carrier then to change the treatment recipe. We can reduce energy consumption up to 30-40% and reduce larger production by up to 6-70%. The team's next plan is to integrate a sewage treatment plant together with a drinking water system. To achieve beautiful drinking water, that is our ultimate goal. We will not forget that in 2003, SARS raged in Hong Kong, causing nearly 300 deaths. The city was listed as an infected area for months. And so I came to Hong Kong in 2004 to work initially on SARS and emerging infections, and then switch over to influenza. One of the advantages of working in Hong Kong is that we have really good data at all levels of society for flu, other infectious diseases, we've managed to control with vaccines, but flu, we haven't been successful. The research that we're doing here could help us to really control flu and reduce all those illnesses, hospitalizations and deaths that occur every year, not only in Hong Kong, but around the whole world. Many elderly attended the clinic when their hearing loss, in fact, is quite severe. I heard a lot of stories about family conflicts, social isolation, and um, I think actually these kind of problems can be avoided. My research interest is to develop automated hearing screening system to a hearing screening program at the community level. So we um, tested the system in around 130 elderly in the community centers, and the age range from 65 to 90. If I can obtain a research run, say, to carry out an epidemiology study, it will help inform about the resources allocations of hearing healthcare provision. History is important as it helps us learn from the past in creating the future. About a thousand years ago, that the people from the uh, middle part of China, mostly east of China, they migrated to this place and settled here. So it's a very long history here. So we gotta know them well in order to know things about Hong Kong today. More than 10 years, we have assisted to produce a Hong Kong history series, which have been very popular. And by doing so, we are promoting uh, Hong Kong history to the general public. We want to put more resources to enlarge the scope of history education. My next step is to further promote Hong Kong history to the level of well history. Biofouling is a serious problem in marine transport. Anti-fouling paint is widely used, but it contains toxic chemicals with heavy metals, such as copper and zinc, 
which raise concerns about marine ecology. It affects the marine life. That means it also affects our food chain. Presently, we are conducting research to develop solar photocatalysis for anti-fouling paint. Solar photocatalysis can perform biocidal effect. The chemicals are safe. There's no heavy metals. This new technology has gained lots of attention in the industry, and the new product will be available in the market soon. To promote the sustainable development of Hong Kong, Professor Lee and her team set up the Research Centre for Sustainable Hong Kong in 2017. We need humanities and social science to benefit Hong Kong. On top of their dedication and desk research work and publishing academic and policy papers, the team also makes outreach visits to different countries along the Belt and Road. Those uh, few trips to, uh, along the Belt and Road are very important. We are already planning ahead for the next stage to look into those uh, overseas uh, economic uh, zones and investigate how Hong Kong enterprises can benefit uh, from these. Hong Kong started a little transplant late, but we catch up very fast. Professor Lowe's team has developed a biobank to collect liver tissues from all patients who have undergone liver transplant. The biobank has collected samples from over 1,400 patients so far. We know eventually what is the outcome of the patient, when does the patient have cancer recurrence. And that's why Hong Kong uh, is now world famous for innovative measures in trying to prevent disease recurrence uh, for transplantation in hepatitis B and also cancer patients. Our ultimate goal is to improve the health of our people. And in liver transplantation, we are doing that through innovations in um, organ preservation, in using marginal liver and trying to promote liver regeneration. Professor Meng has been developing technologies that would help desarthric speakers. Neuromotor disorders also affect the speech signal. We call that desarthric speech. We want to be able to collect a lot of desarthric speech so that we can build desarthric speech recognition systems so that the general listener can understand what was being said, that can make communication easier. Professor Meng also extends her research to enhance language learning. The core technology is mispronunciation detection. All of these incorporate AI technologies. The app now is incorporated in WeChat. It has over a million users a day. A society's resilience to disasters such as fires is a critical consideration in sustainable urban development. We had been working on uh, understanding fires and the behavior of structures in fire, especially in the context of big tragedies where the information from the disaster scene is not available to firefighters for them to make the right decisions. Professor Usmani and his team are pursuing a project to create a revolutionary firefighting system. In future, firefighters will have a real-time forecast before entering a fire disaster scene. So forecasting is the key word. We minimize the damage, we minimize the injury to people and minimize the loss to property. Currently, manufacturers rely on workers to randomly inspect the fabric with the naked eyes. But this process is usually inconsistent and unreliable. To improve consistency and reliability, Professor Wong created WiseEye, an AI-based textile material inspection system. The detection rate of the WiseEye is over 90%, while with human eye, the accuracy rate is only 70%. Over 8 million fabric image data collect in the real-life manufacturing site we are used to train the system by deep learning. My ultimate goal is that the wise eye can be widely applied to automate the quality control process of the whole traditional textile industry, which still greatly relies on human visual inspection. In 
Hong Kong, the number of prostate cancer cases has been increasing in recent years. Traditional blood tests in the hospital will be required for suspected cases. However, the accuracy of blood tests is limited. The bus test accuracy is only around 25%. We identify the new biomarker. So nowadays, uh, our technologies and, uh, can achieve more than 60% uh, uh, accuracy. This is a very simple test, and the patient only put their urine with our chemical by 20 minutes, and then they can observe the color change, and then the result come out. We would like to try to find out more biomarker in different cancer disease, for example, like beta cancer or nasoforensic cancer as well. The new research matching grant scheme is launched at an opportune time. In addition to diversifying research funding sources for our higher education sector, it will incentivize research collaborations between industries and academia. This cross-sector collaboration would encourage more research commercialization with industries and knowledge transfer with the community. Please join us in supporting and working with the research community to deliver our vision of uplifting the position of Hong Kong in the global research arena. Let's drive research for impact.